What's good, football fans? Back at you once again with another video. And you know, this year I've really been keeping an eye on rookie running back Antonio Gibson. You know, the kid has got all kinds of skills when it comes to catching the ball, and he's actually showing a lot of growth when it comes to being a running back. Now, I know a lot of people look at this guy as more so as a wide receiver, kind of has that slash weapon kind of thing to him, you know, where in college he was used more as a receiver. But, you know, Washington would just rather him be a running back that they could insert into Scott Turner's system. Now, what I've been noticing is, is J.D. McKissick has been getting a lot of carries that I feel like Gibson should maybe battle for. And the reason that's going on is because McKissick is a lot better in pass protection. So what that's done is it's led to Antonio Gibson getting less snaps per football game. It's also led to Peyton Barber getting more snaps as well. Now, last week's game may be a little bit of an exception because they were trying to, you know, let the foot off the gas pedal a little at the end and, and Barber got more carries. But I was looking over the coach's film when it came out this afternoon, and a lot of what I see is plays like what I'm getting ready to show you right here, where they basically fake to Gibson and then he rolls out, maybe goes into the flat after maybe pausing a little bit at the line and maybe look like he was gonna do something there. See here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's an example of what I was talking about. See, they fake to him and then he just kind of goes out in the flat. Watch it from the other angle, you might be able to see a little bit better. Of course, it's a pass to Logan Thomas, but it's a fake. He kind of stops the line, goes out to the flat. It's a lot of those plays that he's being used in that type of fashion. At least six, in fact that I noticed that um, when the play wasn't designed for him to either carry it or catch it, that they would fake him, he would go out into the flat, and they would throw it to the tight end or whatever the case may be. A lot of times he was wide open in the flat, and he was just kind of used as a distraction for the defense. But one thing I saw during the game, and look, I'll watch that again. I mean, you can't ask for much more. The way that you that you always want your guys to, to at least get in the way of the guy. I've seen some guys that were so horrible at it. Chris Thompson got to be okay at it, the way that he would just throw himself at the defender. And I believe that Gibson is going to do nothing but get better at this. He didn't really have to do a whole lot of this in college. So, you know, his growth rate on this particular skill was probably a little off when it came to his professional ability. But it's just nice to see him progress through this and he's actually doing what he's being taught. He actually hindered two guys there because there was another man that came from behind. If you watch it from the other angle, you'll see the second guy. But yeah, he, I mean, he, he did a real good job here. If it hadn't have been for him throwing that block, Alex Smith would have either been hit or would have had to have moved the other direction and wouldn't have been able to get that play off. Now, I mentioned that there were a couple plays. Here's the other one. And he actually does a decent job here of hindering the play, but he doesn't exactly make the block. You see that? His guy kind of ran up to him and stopped. I mean, he still did his job, though, because his job is to hinder the guy from coming in. Watch. See? You see it from the other angle. His man stopped a good step or two ahead of him, but Gibson was ready to take his legs out on that play as well. You watch it over here. It's on the right side of the play. Right here. This guy right here. He was ready to do the same thing to him that he did on that first play, but his man pulled up and barely saved himself from getting taken out. But that is what you want to see out of your young running back is growth. And the potential is there with Antonio Gibson is actually off the charts when it comes to his skill set what he can do with the football once he gets it in his hands and his ability to make others miss is really off the chart and as their line gets better and as the team itself and the players get more used to the scheme and more comfortable with it you're going to see them do more and more things with gibson the great thing about it is is that mckeesick is actually a pretty good back himself and does things that the coaching staff likes as well so these two guys together are actually playing off of each other and doing well in the process. Now, what I want to see more of in the coming weeks is Gibson actually doing this more than just once or twice a game and the team having a lot more faith in his ability to do it, which obviously will lead to him getting more snaps and being more involved in the offense. And his type of player is the type of player that we want on the field doing big things for us and putting points on the board. And if you guys haven't noticed, 
the team plays a lot better when he rushes the ball and gets over 90. He should have had 100 yards yesterday. There was a couple of plays where he went backwards a little bit. And you could make a little bit of an argument that maybe he should have gotten some carries at the end of, end of the fourth quarter and maybe Peyton Barber shouldn't have. But I think that could have came down to the coaches basically saying they want to try to keep their guys somewhat fresh. They got the short week. And Barber needed a little bit of carries, though. If you look at his stats, he's definitely not putting up the yardage that, that Gibson is or even that McKeesick is. At any rate, keep an eye on your developing running back because he's getting there. Y'all take it easy. Peace.